A light to the nations with Ira Michelson and Rod Bryant. A Noahide connection. Don't go away. Strap in. You are about to see the light. Welcome to A Light to the Nations. I'm Rod Bryant with my illustrious co-host, Ira Michelson. This is a wonderful day to be alive, a wonderful day to encourage and other people to be a light to the nations. Ira, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm a little bit chilly today. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a little bit windy up on the mountain of Tzfat and uh, went, out, went out earlier and the wind was whipping, and but it's... Definitely not as cold as it was the other day when uh, we still don't have hot water here. Oh, why? Um, why is that? So, so Tzfat um, is the highest ev- city with the highest elevation in Eretz Yisrael. We're at 3,000 feet above sea level. And we got over Shabbos sub-freezing temperatures here. And you, you know Israel, Rod. You've been here oh, several times. Yeah. You know, you have the Dud Shemesh. You know the water tank on top of the building that right. you know that uh, with a solar panel and oh, yeah. uh, you oh, yeah. know a heater. Well, with the sub freezing temperatures, almost everybody's dud shemesh was damaged in the freezing temperatures. Either the fittings, the pu- the plug popped, or oh okay, you I know, or the fittings the fittings froze to the solar panel. So um, m- much of Sfat had no water at all over Shabbos, and uh, those of us that did have water haven't had hot water. And uh, we're trying I just to get those. It had gotten so cold that the heater couldn't actually heat the water up. I, I, no, well, I mean, you know, we a lot of stuff froze too. Right. So it's the people had water, you know, their pipes froze in the older places. Right. So, but anyway, it's still it doesn't matter. You know what? It's an amazing place to live, Broke and the gym. things that the things that bother us elsewhere don't bother us in Eretz right. Israel. I mean, you look at it and you go, ah, eh, you know, no, it's big just deal. a thing, just a thing. You know, I could could I could be living back in the U.S. Right. right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot more problems besides not having hot water. Yeah. So um, you, how you know, about you? How's things in Texas? Out, outstanding. You know, we've had some cold weather here, freezing. Uh, you know, down in Houston, it got down to a blistery 30 degrees, and it's back wow. up to around 49 right now. So it's not too wow, bad. So it's been raining a so, lot. So you got, like, weather like us because yeah, yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah. We're, we're, we were, uh, like, 26 or 27 you know, there's, Friday night. there's a big connection between Israel and Texas. So Yeah, I'm telling you. We're, we're you know? experiencing some incredible blessings here. Yeah, last, week's, last week's show um, got some amazing responses from, uh, really? from individuals. Oh, yes. What well, I'm, it's always whenever you have the Jackie Mason of rabbis. Well, of course. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> he's funny, but some, somebody told <laughs> me that is. they couldn't hardly pay attention because uh, we were being so funny. So. And really? I said, I said, we because we were funny. We are all yeah, three of all us. Three of us. We're just hilarious. We're, well, you know, it's 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 pretty difficult to be the front man. You kind of have to be the straight man when yeah. uh, you have such a large personality on the line with you. Absolutely. Was, but anyway, what, what um, he said though is what was profound. I mean, that was yeah, amazing. it was very profound. And you know, you and I have been talking about this, you know, just off the air as well about the amazing things that are going on in the world. I mean, look at what's going on with Nativ, you know, Nativ growing, you know, by leaps and bounds, and and opening up different Nativ centers across the world. And um, you know, my work here in Sfat with Rabbi David Katz, and mm-hmm. what's going on with the world of the gear. And we're going to have Rabbi Katz on next week, actually, right, on the show next week, talking about what's going on with that. But yes. This is just, I, I mean, the show was so profound last week, as you said, with uh, what Ra- uh, Rabbi Singer shared with us about what's going on in Indonesia, that you and I thought about it and said, we have to have somebody on the show from Indonesia um, that's on the ground that can talk about this and talk about what's going on in a country. It's astounding to me. We're talking about a country of like 250 million people mm-hmm. Where probably over 200 million of those 250 million are Muslim, and yet we see that there's not a place 
in the world, Rod, that seems to not be touched by Hashem. Absolutely. In drawing people out of idolatry and drawing them towards the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the true Torah. So think about this. I have three countries that are very prominent in its Muslim influence. And and they are contacting me wanting to study and wanting to learn. And it just absolutely is amazing. I, don't, I won't even mention it on the air because it's pretty, pretty uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, it can be hazardous for your health to study the Torah in this way, especially Torah Judaism. <laughs> you want to <laughs> you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, I do. Um, so, in talking about that and really wanting to have somebody on that could could really um, speak about this from a, a grassroots level about what's going on in, in Indonesia, um, we we we've been able to contact through Rabbi Singer. Um, the person who actually organized him coming um, to Indonesia when he came to speak. And that's, um, her name is Elisheva. And let me see if I can do this right. It's Elisheva Wiria Atmaja. Elisheva, are you with us? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. You did it right. <laughs> I did it right. Did it's I? one oh. try. This first try, and that's good. First try. It's so nice mm-hmm. having you on the show. And yeah, it's amazing to be here. Amazing. On, I'm, I'm, I'm on Adel Sheva, you know, how could have thought, you know, that's so amazing. Well, you know, that's what, that's what happens with a lot of people. You know, we, we had a guest on recently from another a very uh, well-known forum that's uh, yeah. going by Leaps and Bounds on mm-hmm. Facebook now. And she was like the same way. She goes, I can't believe I'm on our I know. <laughs> I couldn't sleep like for three days. I think. I mean, when, oh. when was it when you? There's like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Well, this is well, not, this is not going to be an uncomfortable thing. You're going to have a, a good time sitting down and sharing yeah. experiences that you've had. I think so. Yeah. Of yeah, course. Absolutely. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we, you, you were listening to us talk, and yeah. know, I mentioned that you were the person that that kind of organized the trip. Rabbi Singer shared with us how he true. was contacted to come. Yeah. So, why don't you tell us how that came about? Yeah. Why? why this group of people wanted to organize this and bring Rabbi Singer there. Okay. Well, um, um, before I actually um, organized Rabbi Singer to come, I was actually teaching these people. Um, I mean, I have this uh, website where I have an online class called Etz Chaim. I don't know if you know about that. But um, I have now about 500 Indonesians um, that I send out newsletters and teachings of the Torah and Tanakh uh, to them. They're, they consist of Christians and uh, Muslims and also um, all from other di- different minority religions in Indonesia. It's in Indonesian, so... So uh, there's one person who's actually in Papua, the Indonesian part of uh, Papua, um, who joined that class, that online class, and he was actually like high up in the church somewhere in Papua. So at some point, um, we went, uh, he and his wife, we went together uh, to Israel with me and my group. And uh, when we came back, he organized for me to come to Papua to teach there. It's a lot of con- a lot of people there, like different kinds of tribes, Papuan tribes. And um, in the beginning, I just thought they were like Christians. They were Christians wanting to hear the message of the Tanakh the Torah. So I was teaching there. And um one of them um, stood up and said, you know what, uh, he came from his tribe in Biak, that's like a small island off the mainland of Papua, and he said, that, um, my ancestors never allowed me to go into a church, to step foot on the church, in church, because they always told told us that um, they were... Uh, the church is, uh, is full of lies and uh, they shouldn't be a part of it. But he said, um, whatever they teach, it's always a lie. And they didn't want to, didn't want to listen. They said that they have a, they, they were taught about this one God. There's only one God and nobody knows the name except one person in the tribe. And he always, um, um, uh, gives it gives that name to the son and you know, or to the, the, the next the next generation and the next generation is always in the same family, and he, they never mention the name they never talk about the name of this God except one time in a year sounds familiar, 
So this this guy um, just talked so much about all the things, and after he has, he was hearing me um, listening to me <clears throat> teach, he said, "You know, this is what exactly our ancestors gave us. What you just taught us, this is what this is so similar to what my ancestors gave, um, um, teach us and taught us." You know, and I was like, "Wow, what is this?" And more and more people came out and they they tell me stories, things like. Uh, um, we have a lullaby, um, lullaby that says that the lyric goes something like this. Um, we used to be 12 brothers, but now 10 are lost or something like that. Or they, were, they used to be 12 mm. brothers, but two are lost or something That's like nice. that. It's two or 10. It's, they had this lullaby and it's always the same group of uh, tribe. You know, there were like 100 and I think there were like 160 something people there. Uh, um, coming from all over the cities in Papua. And more and more people just came out, and when they heard about the message, they kind of felt click and say, hey, I know this message. I know this message. It doesn't sound um, alien to us. This is really this is really uh, familiar, you know. And then they started talking about this, and I said, you know what, maybe you should, you should consider to become Jewish or something, you know. And then um, uh, after that, a few months later, I came to know... Um, Rabbi Tobias Singer online, um, and I organized him to come over uh, first to Jakarta to meet with the Jewish people here, with the Jewish uh, descendants. Uh, and we were oh, we were already converted there, and then we took him to uh, Papua, and there he actually he was he was like the moment we he we landed. Um, they were like full of love and they had this huge banner with his face, with Rabbi Singer's face and in Indonesian sayings, uh, Selamat Datang, which means, uh, welcome Rabbi Singer with uh, two flags on it, Indonesian flag and, uh, the Israeli flag. And he, he was so touched and he was crying and, um, all these people were, were like singing Hebrew songs and, um, gave him like a short tour through the city and explaining uh and not just the city you know like the suburbs and there's a lake there and then all these stories about what the ancestors did you know how they came here and then how they uh were they went on a boat from peru and then they came to this land and then and so on and so forth it's like so overwhelming it's hard to explain it's just there's so much to say there's so much happening on the on on uh, on that trip that it was it was so hard to explain it you know what i mean it's so overwhelming and he was all he did was sit there in the car and I saw him crying not crying but um, you know like his eyes became right. yeah watery and mm -hmm. and I I understood I understood it's like really overwhelming so um, of course and people there have weird um, last names you know surnames um, they've they've, ha they've had it for centuries they say like family names like Torah Sukkot uh, menorah and they have no clue what it meant you know until we actually came there and said you, do you know even know what that is because in indonesian they, we don't use these words right in the indonesian bible we don't use torah it's taurat uh, we don't use man menorah we use kakidian it's an indonesian translation and and all these uh, surnames it sounds very much like those um hebrew words they have no clue what it means so <laughs> it's just overwhelming. So when we told them what it is, like, what? What is this? So let me so, let me ask you. It's when, fantastic. When, it's really fantastic. When, mm -hmm. when these individuals heard mm -hmm. uh, Rabbi Singer speak, what was uh, yes. what was the reaction right off the bat? I mean, when they actually heard him sort of bring down some, some of the knowledge of, of Torah to them. Mm. The thing is that uh, they, uh, apparently somehow, although they were Christian, they were Christian. Yeah, they were Christians. Um, uh, they they were told by their forefathers before, like maybe grandfathers or grandmothers and stuff, that, and or parents perhaps, that Christianity is a lie. Somehow they just they always heard these these this statement, you know. Mm -hmm. Although they're in the in the church, so when Rabbi Singer um, opened up their eyes about the New Testament and everything, they didn't. Uh, 
they didn't, you know, didn't, didn't reject them. it. Right, didn't surprise no, them. No, not at all. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, oh, okay, now we understand what our fathers meant when they t- told us that it's all a lie. Right. So, um, yeah, so it was really, for them, it was really like a divine um, um, connection. With- how, how was your journey in life? Uh, how did you get to this place to embrace Torah, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting. Um, there was a few years ago when I realized that I had Jewish ancestry from my father's side. And then uh, the first question that popped in my mind was, um, who are the Jews? You know, what do they believe in and what is, what's their God? You know, who is their God? So, and of course, uh, um, the Jewish Bible or the Old Testament is very accessible here. Um, so I started reading it and, uh, it wasn't so much. I was, uh, I was brought up as a Christian by my mom. Um, she's a Christian and, uh, it wasn't so much about leaving Christianity. Um, eventually it was more about chasing this God of Israel. Correct. You know what I mean? I mean, I hear a lot of stories where they say, um, where they say that, um, I started my journey because something doesn't add up in the New Testament. You know, something is just uh, not right. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that feeling at the time. I just thought New Testament is just uh, it's okay. It's fine. You know, it's uh, I had no problem with the New Testament. But I was just chasing this God of Israel. I just wanted to know who he was. So I started reading the, the, the Tanakh. I started reading the Torah. I started praying to God and asking, you know, Give me the ability to understand Hebrew or read it or understand it. Just So I started really hard, really hard to study it. I'm not very good at it yet, but I started to understand and start to um, um, able to uh, to read and to write and to understand a little bit of the grammar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, there are a lot of rabbis out there that was really, really very kind to me. And they mentored me from from far away. They they were in New York. Um, somebody like Rabbi Yosef Serebriansky. He was he's such a beautiful soul. And he mm-hmm. whenever he taught Torah to me, it was so amazingly deep that uh, it just it's just so wonderful. And it's a very it's just I c- we couldn't stop pondering about that. So, and I was more about chasing that light of God and not um, leaving the darkness of the New Testament. You know what I mean? It was more about that. I didn't even realize that the New Testament at the time, I mean, I didn't realize, at the time I didn't realize that the New Testament had, I mean, it's so manipulative, you know, and full of deceit. So I didn't even realize that. I mean, people were talking about um, Rabbi Michael Skobak's videos or Tovia Singer's videos. I was, I had no interest in that at all. Uh, what I was more interested in was um, teach, uh, studying in the Tanakh and being immersed in the Torah and the Hebrew Tanakh and stuff like that. So it was more, it was just more amazing. So, what happened was the more I dwelt into it, then I came to the conclusion that while well, Christianity seems like a completely different religion because nothing actually fits, you know. There is this one um, uh, one lesson that I was, I was taught by Yosef Serebriansky about how God created the world. Um, it was not so much about uh, creating it from nothing to... Uh, for, uh, out of nothing it was more like he was giving definition to a chaos chaotic world a, a, um, an earth that is more like a unclear unseparated and m- muddled or an indistinct uh confused entangled mass something like that you mm-hmm. know it was completely that's that's what it's called tohu vavohu. um they call it and that's that's basically the definition of it like an earth that is just a confusing entangled mass and unclear and unseparated and so on and so on. Uh, and then he taught me that on day one, on day from day one to day seven, what he did was when in creation was uh, separating things. In, in other words, he was giving uh, um, definitions to each one. Like for example, on day one, he cre- he um, separated light from darkness, right? And day two, the water above from the water below. And then day three, he separated the ocean from the land. And day four, he separated the day from night. Five baby animals from their mums. And um, day six, uh, he separated Eve, the female version, 
of men from the male version. And then on day seven, he separated the Shabbat from the rest of the week. So it's the whole creation is about separ- separation. It's about uh, giving definition to everything, you know. Right. And then it clicked in, in my head. It was like, whoa, what does it mean then? What does it mean? Because all my life I was taught that JC is, uh, you know, JC. Yes. <laughs> is, um, he's 100% God and 100% man, but that doesn't fit with the Torah, with the Genesis, with Genesis 1. It doesn't fit at all because God is so interested in separating things, giving definition, clear definition on everything, and supposed to come to this earth being a complete mixture between God and man. That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. You know right. what I mean? And it's like course, that doesn't – And of course there's yeah. one thing that can't be separated, and that is God. That is Hashem. Yeah. It can't be separated. And that's – yeah, exactly. And, and that is, um, that is when I figured out that, oh, okay, this is completely, Christianity is a completely different religion. So where does it come from? And, um, it was after I started my conversion actually to Judaism that I finally, um, uh, met, uh, with Rabbi Singer and started, um, watching his videos. And then it just, oh, there's so many mistakes, so many ma- manipulation and so many, you know, they're all like all these lies and uh, deceit and everything. Then I really understood, oh, that re- that's that's a lie. The whole thing is a lie. So in the beginning, it wasn't about leaving the New Testament. It was more right. about finding the truth. Well, you know, you know each, each, each person that we've uh, talked with and engaged with over the past, mm-hmm. you know, year, uh, little nuanced differences in the story. But basically mm. the same line, <clears throat> people just get mm-hmm. this uh, deep urge and yearning to connect mm-hmm. to, to God and to connect to Torah and to understand it. And for a mm. long time, people, I think, try to mix the New Testament and the Torah together, try to fit it together. As, yeah. you know, but they, they realize it's like putting a round mm-hmm. peg in a square hole. It can't be done. Uh, we're getting ready to take mm-hmm. a break. And after the break, we're going to obviously bring okay. you back right after the break. We'll continue this very interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. You're listening to A Light to the Nations here on Arut Sheva. We'll be back right after uh, a couple of messages and some music. You're listening to Arutz Sheva Radio. Arutz Sheva Radio, your connection to Israel. You're listening to A Light to the Nations with Ira Michelson and Rod Bryant here on Israel National Radio. Welcome back, everybody, to A Light to the Nations on Arut Sheva with me, Ira Michelson, and my wonderful and amazing holy brother, Rod Bryant. We've been talking to Eli Sheva. We're a atmaja, atmaja. Yeah. Okay, first one was actually much better. <laughs> yeah, it was better. I was better. I stumbled this time. We're a Atmaja. We're a Atmaja, yeah. From Jakarta, Indonesia. And she's been sharing with us about the amazing things that are going on in Indonesia, how she, um, how she got involved with uh, teaching people all over the islands of Indonesia and how she got involved with Rabbi Singer and bringing him over mm-hmm. and organ- organizing that meeting. Um, she's been sharing a little bit about her journey. I want to go back a little bit um, in this mm-hmm. because you mentioned something about ancestry, and I think it's important for people to hear about this. You know, I did a little research uh, before we had Rabbi Singer on the show, uh, mm-hmm. and I came to f- find out that, you know, there were two, there seems to be an- ancestry from two major places. Um, one is Peru that you mentioned, but there are also many Jewish Dutch merchants that came over. Yeah. That settled in Indonesia as well. That that it seems, and so your ancestry. You mentioned your father's ancestry. Was that yeah. Dutch or was it Peruvian? 
Yeah, I was Dutch, yes. It was Dutch. Dutch. Okay, so mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. You, you, you came from that. And then you talked about conversion. So you've been through your process, um, yeah. I guess, because a lot of the, because it's so many hundreds of years ago, um, the ancestry goes back. Um, but you also mentioned another thing. You mentioned you mentioned Eitz Chaim. So maybe mm-hmm. you want to talk about it. You, you you. So you're a radio. Uh, you're you're an expert at this. You're like a professional like us, right? <laughs> kind mean? of. It's different. Yeah. It's one thing to speak in Narod Sheva. <laughs> oh, it's the same yeah. thing. So tell us a little uh, bit really? about Eitz Chaim. And what I want to know is n- yes. not just about Eitz Chaim, but how Eitz Chaim has changed mm-hmm. as a result. Because obviously, you when you first started it. You were teaching and you were still um, still coming, not necessarily from a Christian perspective, but you were raised a Christian, and yeah. then it's taken a new turn. So share with us a little bit about yeah. that, about Eitz Chaim and, oh. and where it's going now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason why I started Eitz Chaim is actually not because I wanted to share something to the world. I mean, it's not about because I wanted to teach people. It was more about... Um, it's more about myself, you know, and Rabbi Yosef Serebriansky actually pointed it out really, really correctly and accurately. He said, you know, this whole project that you're doing, this is not for them. This is actually for you. You're the one who's trying to uh, figure out about who you are and what you want to believe or what you're trying to find uh, uh, and finding your God. Um, and, and the journey that you're going through, you're sharing it with other people but it's actually for you to find yourself and that's very true so um uh, i'm i'm somebody who likes to write and uh, i used to write a lot of diaries when i was younger so um whatever whatever um torah teaching that i that i received that really touched my life touched my heart um, i write it down you know and then i thought, thought wow these these are really beautiful beautiful um, concepts and teachings, you know. I mean, I can't just keep this to myself. That's what I thought. I said, like, I mean, I, how can I just be quiet about this? You know, when you're, you're a beggar and you're so hungry for food and you know where to find bread, you would not keep silent and you will go back to your family and to, to your friends and to your loved ones to tell them where you can find bread, right? That's what you would do naturally. And that's how I did it. So, I mean, the reason why I... I, I wanted to share it is actually because I found it first myself and I just, my, my soul just exploded because it was so beautiful, so amazing. And I felt like, wow, how can I ever keep this to myself? That's like, that would be so stupid. And so I started writing. So I started writing and then I set up in the beginning, it was only two to a few people, just very close friends, only nine, ten people first, and then it grew because the, these people forwarded my 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 uh, emails to them, and it became so huge, about two hundred, that it was hard to trace where the email just went go, uh, to uh, just went. And what I did was I was setting up this uh, email marketing campaign thing. You know, you have this software where it, where right. it mm-hmm. sends an email every two weeks. Uh huh. So I set up that account and I put all these uh, people in my mailing list there, like 200 of them, and uh, set up a website and uh, people can register there to the newsletter. And I call it the online class, the Eds Chaim online class. And it grew. Now it's almost uh, 600, like 565 people now, all wow. Indonesians. Yeah, and they're and they're not all Christians. They're Muslims, you know, Muslims. So it's very different. Muslims here and Muslim in in the Muslims in in the Arab world are completely different. They're very interested in Judaism, you know, and Elisha, they Elisha, love. Elisheva, you know, wh- yes. while you're on this issue of, of Muslims, um, mm-hmm. they are different there, but at the same time, there there are Muslims in many different Muslim co- countries that are beginning to mm-hmm. awaken. Maybe it's because they have a Jewish neshama. And, and they're, Probably, they're asking yeah. these questions. They're wanting to really know uh, Hashem. Yeah. They're wanting mm-hmm. to connect to Torah. They are. Uh, um, they come. Uh-huh. Yes, that's exactly what's happening here in Indonesia. Also, we have. Um, I have very a lot of people uh, in the mailing list that are Muslims. And uh, actually, uh, this coming um, Thursday, uh, Rabbi Singer is going to Bali, and I'll be accompanying him. I will also teach, uh, um, speak there in front of uh, a group of Muslims 
who are um, teaching each other uh, about tolerance and uh, interfaith uh, relationship and interreligion oh, and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah, and these people are really, they heard about this rabbi here in Indonesia and he, they contacted me because I know one of them and he said, can you bring them here? And I said, sure, no problem. So I brought, you know, so I just signed, signed Rabbi Singer up and uh, he will be teaching and speaking here um, this week in Bali in front of these Muslims. And these Muslims are the ones who are actually wanting to um, to find out what the values of Judaism is, who the God is, and what's Torah and everything. They're very curious and very friendly. And it's not like a different, it's a completely different right. uh, setting. Yeah. So uh, that's that's how I started at Chaim, actually. So now it's 565, lots of uh, Christians and Muslims. And I believe a lot of them are um, our, our descendants also, right. um, they just probably, yeah, we, I just don't know. How does a person many. get, to, uh, get to your, um, uh, what do you call it? The newsletter? How, how can they subscribe to it? Uh, it's, uh, in Indonesian. Okay. So, um, so they, so, unless you can see, yeah, <laughs> unless they're Indonesian, it's not going to work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, but it's a website. There's a website. It's called okay. www.itschaim.org, but it's, it's Indonesian. So, mm -hmm. and also the, um, broadcast. Um, we used to do it. Uh, yeah, we wanted to do it more than once a once a month, but mm -hmm. uh, because we had to pay airtime, so it's more ex it's really expensive. So wow. we did it like once a month. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this really this could absolutely impact Indonesia and bring it mm -hmm. to a higher level, and this could really usher it. I I've been thinking about this a lot since we heard the mm -hmm. news. This could be like the first. Uh, shot over the bow, per se, of redemption coming oh. to the rest of the world. I mean, this is incredible. I know. It is, isn't it? It's just so exciting to be involved in God's work like this. It's really exciting, and you just don't know where it takes you. I mean, I wouldn't, like two years ago, I wouldn't, I didn't, it could never occur to me that I would be in Arucheva, you know, like two years ago. Where uh, was I? Yeah, well, I, I, I think like for Ira it's the same way, because we started mm. doing uh, this as part of our own discovery. And I think you really sort of captured that really well. This is about mm -hmm. our own journey. But once you get here, you you cannot keep quiet. You, this is such a great joy. I was explaining exactly. to Ira this morning, just yeah. the, you know, my deep mm -hmm. love for the Torah is so powerfully mm -hmm. overwhelming mm -hmm. at times that exactly, I yeah. get very, I, you know, I, I get pretty, uh, what do you call it? Um, I want to defend it. I want to come come to its mm. defense and to share it with yeah. other people. And when I yeah. hear other people yeah. from the outside treat it with such disregard and disrespect, mm. it's it's now the, the the person that knows Torah, you know, yeah. becomes so frustrated and and emotionally attached to the Torah is a powerful mm. thing. Spiritually, how is, how how yes. has your life no. changed? Oh, completely. <laughs> it feels like. Um, you know the term that the Christians say you're born. You have to be a born again Christian to, and blah blah blah. But it's this 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 is really like being born again Absolutely. in a different way. You know Absolutely. because completely you're a completely different person. And in some ways you have to change everything. You know like before your goal is this, and all of a sudden you, the goals of life shifts. It's like you you have a completely different life now. Um, starting from the beginning, you know, have you, did you ever go through that process? You have to just, everything is just from zero and then you have to start from there. It's like, it's a completely different life. It's just hard to explain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you well, can completely disconnect it from family also. And yeah. Uh, Rod, you, you hit on it very well. Um, and Eli Sheva, you said it beautifully when you talked about, you know, a beggar knowing where bread is and, and being willing to share it, you know, this is how Rod and I feel. You know, we yeah. would have said the same thing years ago. We would have never thought that we would have our own show on our Rucheva. And of course, mm -hmm. it was about self-discovery. But now we feel in the same way that we can't keep quiet about this, that, that exactly. there's something happening. Mm -hmm. There's a tidal wave taking place mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. a Torah, you know, just hitting the nations. And we're dealing, uh, you know, in our neck of the woods, both, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the United States and Israel and uh uh, you know, the people are just giving up uh, idolatry and, and grasping towards Torah. Can you expand a little bit? You talked about, like, for instance, the meeting that Rabbi Singer, mm -hmm. that you'll be accompanying him 
you know, to go and speak to these Muslims. Where do you see things uh, going now? How, what What is the direction uh, um, taking now with Indonesia, mm-hmm. with the different islands? Because Indonesia is very big. There's made up of mm-hmm. so many different islands. You, you mentioned yeah, some of the Java, mm-hmm. Jakarta, Papua, you know, yeah. all these different yeah. places. Yeah. What, what yeah. do you see happening uh, now in Indonesia um, with Torah? This is going, I believe this is going to be much bigger, so much bigger. I can't imagine how much bigger, but I really feel this is only like the beginning of something really, really huge in Indonesia. There's this one thing also, the government uh, doesn't acknowledge Judaism as a religion, so it's not an official religion that they can, they acknowledge. Uh, but uh, very recently, like a few months ago, the government sent researchers uh, to study um, uh, to study us, you know, the, the, the Jews and um, the new converts and stuff. And the reason for these uh, studies is to uh, um, write a proposal to the government, um, to the, um, how do you say, the Department of uh, Religious Affairs, uh, in order to bring Judaism and um, make it as an official religion. So this is very exciting, isn't it? So, wow. I mean, it's a... Okay, Indonesia is actually a republic. People keep referring to it as a Muslim country. It's not. It's a republic. It's a secular republic. Um, but uh, it just happens to be that there are 205 million Muslims in, living here. So, But um, uh, they just didn't have any Jews so far. Or maybe we they we did. We, we were always here, but we, did, we were just hiding. So and now that this tidal wave is going, everybody is coming out. So it's just because one came out, people will say, well, she's brave enough or he's brave enough. I'm going to come out too, you know, and then they all come out you now. And all of a sudden we have so many Jewish descendants all over the place. And it's saying, oh, yeah, actually, my grandmother, he, she was also Jewish and she's from, from Holland. And, you know, you have this incredible stories. Alicia, and also you, there's this. I'm sorry. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Go ahead. You can go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is this uh, um, special area in Sumatra that's called Aceh. Aceh is, a, is the only province in Indonesia that has Sharia law. And there they have the biggest, uh, um, how do you say, a Jewish cemetery, mm-hmm. Iraqi Jewish cemetery there. That's huge. Wow. So, And there are descendants there too. And uh, in one of, uh, I, think in, I think the last... Um, the last interview with Rabbi Singer on Voice of Israel about about uh, the Jews in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Um, there is one there is one Indonesian who commented who comes from that place and he said I am a descendant of an Iraqi Jew. Where, where can I connect with the other Jews in Indonesia? It's amazing. It's just all of a sudden they all come out. And, well, I, I think uh, that you really you really hit the point. Uh, Right, just right on target when you said mm. uh, it encourages other people. When someone makes that decision, encourages encourages other people to go ahead and make that step. We're, we're mm. seeing the same thing here. What would you yeah. say to an individual who is sort of still under the radar, still not being very vocal, maybe doesn't really mm-hmm. know a whole lot? What would you I would say, say to them? I would say pulang. Sudah waktunya untuk pulang. That's Indonesian. It's a it's, let's come go home. You know, it's it's time to go home. What about those people in the community that are not of Jewish descent? What are they doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're they're watching us very closely. <laughs> you mean who who do you mean? Well, we're, I mean we're talking the about ones the people that, that have been sort of mm-hmm. in community with you or know you well, and oh, you know those, those yeah. kind of people. Um, well, some um, okay, some some. Some of my friends were Christians and didn't accept that I became Jewish. Um, of course, they, they left. <laughs> but uh, the others, I mean, all a lot of, uh, there are more people who are more interested in what we have to say and the message that we bring to the world, to Indonesia. There are more people. I mean, I don't see, of course, I get threats. I get threat messages. I get nasty emails. But I get more emails saying thank you. I know the truth now. Thank you for bringing me this news. So this is very encouraging. So how about so your family? I'm, I'm like, what, what oh, about your family? Good. Great. Okay. Well, my father is definitely okay. He's uh, he's uh, because he knows he's of he has Jewish ancestry. He also comes to the Chagim, you know, 
um, to Sukkot, to everything. Oh, you have to know that my great grandmother, who was Jewish, she converted to Islam by um, when she married a Muslim um, teacher, a Kiai. A Kiai is like a Muslim teacher, like a rabbi or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the whole family was, uh, and she was shunned by the the rest of the family, the Dutch family, and she she had to um, raise. Um, her children uh, in a very poor condition, also uneducated. That's mm. my grandfather. That's okay. where he comes from. So, and then, uh, and they're all Muslims. Uh, my dad is very supportive about it. So, uh, he reads uh, my Torah, my Humash, and he's very interested. He's always asking. Mm. He read the Haggadah, the Pesach Haggadah, and everything. It's like very interesting. And my mom um, was been a Christian for a long time. She's just very happy, you know, that. Uh, Things are going so well with us. <laughs> well, that's so, not the response that most people get <laughs> from their family. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm very lucky, I think. I, I, li I mean, it sounds like very scary. I live in a, uh, in a country with 205 Muslims, but it goes really well with me. Hashem has been very nice and very good to me. That, Hashem has that, been very that, good to this me. This is a really incredible story. I, I appreciate you, you know, sharing with other individuals uh, that are not yeah. Indonesian. Just to hear what's going on in Indonesia, I think, brings a lot of mm -hmm. encouragement to the other people in other parts of the world. Um, what, yeah, what, I hope so. The, these individuals that are, in, that are going to be hearing your voice today um, that are wanting to connect to Hashem in this unique way, want to take mm -hmm. on tour, but don't know where to start, what would you tell them to do? Start from the Torah, I think. Don't – I mean, study, read the Torah and, and get, a, get a mentor. You know, you can never study it without a mentor. Correct. It's impossible. Yeah. And uh, the most important thing, I think, I mean, I, I really appreciate all what Rabbi Singer and Rabbi Michael Sk Skobak actually are doing. But actually, I think the best way to understand Judaism or to, to start this journey is from the beginning, not from New Testament, but really from the Torah. And then you immerse yourself in this light and it's just, all the lies will just go away. It's just, you know, that's the best way. And the journey is so much, so much strong. I guess. I mean, you feel, you feel the explosion in your soul completely. You feel so different. The Hashem is so much greater than this JC. You know, so much I mean, greater. It's hard to explain. Yeah. I mean, I mean. So, so um, you were speaking about. We speak. We've mentioned numbers many times. Two hundred and fifty million people. Two hundred and five <laughs> million Muslims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the Jewish community. Um, how? What? What number is there now in the Jewish community? And I know Rabbi Singer talked about it. How many mm -hmm. people are in the process now? In addition mm -hmm. to your community in the process yeah. of conversion and what are you guys doing are, are you planning on having a synagogue do you have services every week how do you proceed as a community now yeah um uh, I wrote an article actually uh, about 75 Jews that converted um, l last year and uh, in addition to these 75 there are actually um, I think another 30 and then in Papua uh, 168 people are waiting wow yeah, but the thing is, uh, um, yeah, it's not that easy. <laughs> we only have one rabbi, <laughs> right, right, right. and that's Rabbi Tobia Singer. That's it. Uh -huh. But the thing is, uh, okay, the seventy-five or eighty. Um, um, now it's over seventy-five people. Um, we ha we are spread out in whole Indonesia. Some of us are in Jakarta. Some of them are in in Manado and other places. And wherever they are, it's always a family. They're always connected. Um, there, it's like me and my sister and also a cousin or something it's we're all connected somehow family connected so it's very easy to gather together and have shabbats in their homes but it's never a minyan unfortunately so um but once it grows bigger we really hope to have a minyan very soon and um now that rabbi singer is here in jakarta we're actually planning together to raise funds and um, right now, Rabbi Tovius here is volunteering for everything. He's paying for everything. He's such a generous soul. But we want to rent uh, a place, and that's um, that's in the near future. And we want to have our Shabbat there regularly. Oh, that's that's awesome. it. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. just want to thank you, Eli Sheva, for being on the show today, Rod. Thank you for having me. Just great, great. Another great show with you, my holy brother. And I want thank to thank you. all the listeners. 
uh, for tuning in each week and stay with us each week on A Light to the Nations. Shalom. Mm -hmm. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.